I'd like to welcome all of you here today uh, for the groundbreaking of the future home of the Detroit Public Safety Headquarters. As Beth said early on, uh, this has been talked about going all the way back to 1976, but today it becomes a reality. Um, I want to thank our Police Chief Ralph Godby, our Fire Commissioner uh, Don Austin, our Homeland Security Director Darrell Lundy, U.S. Attorney Barbara McQuaid, and the Michigan State Police and the Detroit City Council for your contributions in this project. The groundbreaking of this public safety complex I first proposed two years ago is symbolic of the transformation of Detroit and the result of successful partnerships with our state, federal, and local law enforcement agencies. This will centralize Detroit Police, Detroit Fire, EMS and Homeland Security operations, as well as the anticipated addition of the Michigan State Police Forensic Lab and the city's Information Technology Department. We know that this consolidation will increase efficiencies and redefine how public safety agencies operate in our city. But I know that new buildings don't keep guns out of the hands of criminals, nor do they put out fires. The courageous men and women of the Detroit Police and Fire Departments do that, and our EMS personnel save countless lives. They have the toughest jobs in our city because they put their lives on the line to protect ours. Now, unfortunately, none of us can turn on television or pick up a newspaper without seeing the headlines about violence wreaking havoc on the lives of our citizens. And believe me, I know this is a difficult time in our city's history, but I also know that we can fight back and that we can win. And I will continue to do everything within my power as a leader of this city to commit and engage all the resources possible to win this battle. I hear those citizens who say they're afraid to come out of their homes and walk our streets, but we can't let fear paralyze us. We must be motivated to take our city back. We must also continue to engage community organizations like the Clergy Night Walks, Detroit 300, and Brothers on Patrol, who have done an outstanding job in supporting our policing efforts, and for that, I sincerely thank you. The only way that we're going to win this battle is by working together. We have seen the recent murder of an 84-year-old church security guard the assault and robbery of an area minister, and the shooting of a six-year-old boy riding in a car with his mother. What community involvement and activism can do? These are distinct examples of how we can combat crime in our streets together and bring these criminals to justice. There is a perception that the criminals and gangs aren't afraid of the police, but let me put them on notice. This is one of the best trained police departments in the country. For those criminals out there, we have an answer for you. We close cases. If you commit a crime, you will pay sooner than later. I just want to make this statement. There's no way that we can put all the responsibility in solving the crimes on our public safety officials. I want to put out a call for all of our community to get behind our public safety leadership at this point in the city and help them not only solve crimes, but let's make sure that we get ahead of what's happening so that we can let our citizens know that they don't have to worry about walking in the street. They don't have to worry about what's going on in their, in their neighborhoods. We have to do this as a combined community. That's the only way that we're going to solve it. So we need our community to step up, help our public safety officials, so that we can solve the crimes that are being perpetrated by so many of us, so little of our community. There are a small group of people that are committing all of these crimes. We cannot be afraid of them. Let's take this war to the streets and let's win this war together. Thank you.